We're going to call the meeting to order, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to request a moment of silence in remembrance of two former employees, um, Annette Sauter, a retired teacher of the North Syracuse Central School District, and Paula Shad, a retired math teacher from the North Syracuse Central School District. Our um, presentations, this is something that we look forward to every holiday season. The CNS High School Vocal Jazz Ensemble, which is directed by Ms. Patterson, and the CNS Jazz Band, directed by Mr. Mayo, will perform the following selections. I Love the Winter Weather, God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, Jingle Bells, and The Man with the Bag.
got a staple, it's not gonna staple. He's got such a drop at every stop of the way. Everybody's waiting for the man with a bag. Christmas is here again. He'll be here. Okay, uh, Mr. Benarski is here, um, as well as uh, obviously 200 and some odd students, 212 students tonight for scholar athletes. Um, this is a New York State recognition. This is not our district that does this, so this is um, you know a standard that's been set outside of our district. So this is a high accomplishment for us. Um, we have several, I'm sure you're going to go over them, we have several, several accomplished athletes on the field as well as, or court, as well as um, in the classroom. And I, I do have to point out that Mr. Lucia during this um, jazz ensemble presentation here was tapping his toes over there. If you had a 12-year-old daughter, she would have told you you were embarrassing her, just so you know. Thanks, Pat. Um, as you said, we did have an outstanding uh, fall season, so congratulations. And uh, welcome to the 2015 Fall Scholar Athlete Ceremony. Um, CNS, as I said, had an outstanding season with four sectional titles, one regional title, and five league titles. This is the, the best fall uh, since I've been athletic director that we've had. Um, while achieving that, like Mr. Soboda said, we had 212 scholar athletes. But before we get into those, I'd like to just recap the season. First, girls cross country finished first in their division with an 11 and one record led by Jillian Norris and Anina Marullo. Boys cross country finished nine and three second in their division led by senior Andrew Berkland. Girls varsity volleyball finished nine and eight led by uh, first team all league Savannah Cicerelli and Kira Coleman. Boys Varsity Volleyball, led by All-CNY Player of the Year, Luke Barnell, and All-CNY Players, Connor Millis and Josh Bigford. They were league champions, sectional champions, regional champions, and finished in the New York State Final Four. They finished the season with a 20-2 and record and were led by CNY Coach of the Year, Coach Lucia. <laughs> Girls Varsity Field Hockey finished fourth in the league, and we're led by First Team All-League Angie Rice and Taylor Lesser. <laughs> Girls Varsity Tennis finished first in their division with a 9-7 and seven record. Boys Varsity Golf finished 11-5, and five, third in sectionals, and they were led by Patrick O'Donnell, who finished first in sectionals, and Johnny Petrin, who finished third in sectionals individually. They both will compete in the New York State Tournament in the spring. 
girls varsity swim. They finished an unbelievable 10 and 0. They were CNY CL league champions and the class A sectional champions and finished 14th in New York State. They broke they broke four school records and were led by Jamie Roth, Lauren Thorne, and Brooke Feedy and were coached by uh, CNY Coach of the Year, Brad Ranieri. Imagine if we had a pool. Varsity football had a great first season under head coach Dave Klein. They finished 5-4 and four overall and 4-1 and one in the league to win their, their league title in their division, and this is the first time since 2007. Girls varsity soccer finished 6th in the league and were led by all CNY player Kate Wagner. And last but not least, boys varsity soccer finished second in the league with a 12-4 and 4 record and they went on to win the 2015 sectional championship. They finished with six first team all league players and Evan Geckler and Matt Pike were selected as all CNY. Congratulations to all the teams on an outstanding fall. So this time we'd like to honor those athletes that got also got it done in the classroom. So if I could have coach Broton come up first. And we'll start with all the um, girls cross country, if all you players could come up first. Girls cross country, come on up. And we'll hold our applause till the end. All teams afterwards will go out in the foyer for a picture with Miss Cook. Ladies and gentlemen, we had a few people that were missing here tonight, so we're just going to run through the list um, as we go. And ladies, when you hear your name, please come over and receive your certificate. Uh, first, we have Leah Bisgrove, Sarah Davis, Emily Dembowski, Ashley Irvine, Hallie Kolakowski. Anina Marulo, Jillian Norris, Gigi Pascarella, Haley Pessel, Mia Pessel, Lexi Piro, Victoria Piro, Julia Roop. Megan Trubia, Hayden Wilson, congratulations ladies, thank you very much. <laughs> Remember to go out to the foyer please. Boys cross country, come on down. And gentlemen, when you hear your name, please step forward and receive your certificate. Andrew Berkland. Eric Bowen. Alan Garns. Tyler Hughes. Jason Hughes. Edward Mahana, Brandon Martin, Zachary O'Neill, Nathan Poyer, Noah Poyer. Nico Rebecca, Joseph Tricarico, Owen Euclea, Zachary Wagner,
David Ware. AJ Wells. Matt Williams. And that is the boys cross country team. You guys head up for a picture in the foyer. Uh, Coach DeHay and the girls varsity volleyball. Uh, we have 15 winners out of our 18 players, which most are here today. So just come on up when you hear your name. Uh, Juliana Grasso. Chelsea Del Vecchio. Charlene Richards. Victoria Dunn. Madeline Murray. Kayla Tutt, Savannah Cicerelli, Olivia Johnson, Corinne Rutkowski, Kaylin Van Auken, Olivia Salvador, Grace Nicolini, Mallory Eimer, Megan Boychek, Kira Coleman, and that's our winners for the year. Mr. Lucia and the boys volleyball team. Thank you. As the uh, players assemble right here, I just think there's, there's one other quick thing worth noting. Uh, Mr. Bernarski mentioned their accomplishments on the court. This is the highest GPA we've ever had, which is over 94 for a scholar athlete team, but no one really knows. Of course, unless you came to a match, the manner in which they did that, when you get to the state final four, there's eight officials that work the three matches that you play, and they rate the teams, uh, all eight, on their sportsmanship. Courteous to opponents prior to the match, respect for officials, language and actions during the match, and attitude toward the opponent during the match, and finally accepts victory and defeat with honor. And I think that how they go about things uh, is really important. And these guys in front of you are the New York State sportsmanship winners also, in addition to that. So we have Luke Barnell, Josh Whitaker. Trevor Cavanis, Joshua Kloop, David Delaney, Mitchell Eager, Reed Jones cannot be with us tonight, Justin Kagabine is hopefully beating Nottingham right now, right, okay, <laughs> hopefully, Connor Millis, The Pat Tupwichian. And those are the 2015 Boys Volleyball Scholar Athletes. Got to the floor for your picture. Coach Kennedy, varsity field hockey.
Okay, we have our field hockey team up here. Uh, we had 21 players on our team this year. We have roughly about half of them here. Uh, I just wanted to mention that all 21 of our players qualified for New York State athlete, scholar athlete, and we had an uh, overall GPA on our team of 95.6, all 21 girls. So congratulations. <laughs> Same things, ladies. When I call you over, come over and get your certificate. We have Emerson Alberici. Margaret Ball, Allie Bartlett, Avery Beck, Kara Benaxis, Ashley Bodner, Marissa Falasco, Haley Florzik, Jenna Fryer, Julia Lantry, <laughs> Catherine Leroy, <laughs> Taylor Lassard, Julia McDonough, Nessa Mackay, Callie Miller, Maria Marizio, Julia Parody, Angela Rice. Jess Snyder, Abby Sumlos, Jamie Wagner. And that's it. That's our uh, field hockey team for you. Thank you. Coach Carey. I am Brooke Ruby. Um, my group is not here, so I'm going to read the names. Um, Sarah Wex. Sydney Franco. Abby Rada. Sarah Cooper. Nicole Perigo, Molly Dober, Brenna Duffy, Megan Trinisky, Nicole Cullen, Savannah Ravel, Maria Scorzelli, Christine Gregory, Elizabeth Westfall, Brooke Murphy, <laughs> um, Sabrina Chikowski, Um, Rachel Allen, yeah. Abby Ellis, <laughs> Kelly Sammons, congratulations. Congratulations, girls.
Coach Kalesa, Boys Varsity Golf. Uh, we're kind of fortunate because we do have two traveling uh, varsity teams. So the boys that you see here are a combination of both squads. Our GPA for the program was 95.4. And here they are. Patrick Myers. Brendan Villeneuve. Nick Bow, uh, Chase Hurley, Noah Pauline, Matthew Kane, Chris Rinaldi, Zachary Kubala. Brody Guido, Ryan Hitman, M Matt Jordan, Nicholas Ernstein, Matt Thornhill. Kyle Kuhn, Jacob Conklin, Ed Zapinski, uh, Andrew Renuzzi, uh, Matt Gorman, Jonathan Petron. Patrick O'Donnell, Logan Field, uh, Alex Van Tassel, John Lisi, Sean McDonald, John Smith, Aaron Zabinski, um, Eric Cummins, Benjamin Haven, good job. <laughs> Good call. Uh, Ryan Cisco. He thinks he's a catcher. <laughs> Good call. Dan Harbaugh. Joshua Matiasic. Nicholas Bow. And these names I have already had called, Chase Hurley and the following. Just think, folks, these guys every day would pick up 40 pounds, throw it on their back, hit a ball, go chase it, and then come back the next day. We had fun. What a great team. Oh, you missed one. Time out. Scott McDonald. Oh, Scott McDonald. You would have blamed me. You would have blamed me. <laughs> to the Board of Education, thank you for everything. Thank you for your support. Without you, we wouldn't have. Did I miss anyone? Yes, dear. <laughs> thank you. 
Thank you, guys. Head up for a picture in the foyer. Coach Ranieri, girls varsity swim. group of gals won every time this year, both in the pool and in the classroom. We had 23 swimmers on the roster, all 23 qualified for the Scholar Athlete Award. Scholar Athlete team average was a 95.84. Uh, come on up and I call your name to receive your award. We have Donia Elzega, Cassandra Baldwin, Amy Baldwin. Carla Champagne, Kirsten Coates, Sarah Dabowski, Grace Divinity, Brooke Beatty, Randy Feeney, Kelly Festa, Miranda Prasketor, Laura Gerber, Olivia Griffin, Lydia Herder, Victoria Jantz, Alyssa LaFace, Catherine Miller, Jamie Rowe, Lauren Thorne, Alyssa Thornhill, Carly Tolhurst, Sarah Walter, the 2015 Championship Swimming and Diving Team. Thank you, sir. Coach Klein, varsity football. As the gentlemen are making their way down, I just want to let you know that um, they had the fifth highest GPA of scholar athletes out of um, all football teams in New York State, and their GPA was 95.8. Landry Rogers. Nicholas Isgar. Kyle Cody. Tyler Mosier, Jake Erickson, Matthew McAndrew, Ty Natali, Connor Hayes, Grant Brennan, Caleb Woodcock, Lucas Merluzzi, Michael Centinella, Keegan Wright, 
Elijah Weiss. Sean McNulty, Rocco Rochetta, Benjamin Reedy, Miles Ely, Omar Mir, Dominic Fiorini, Ryan Cummings, Ryan O'Hara, Andrew Flack, Antonio Lorini. Thank you very much. Congratulations, gentlemen. Girls varsity soccer. Line up, girls. Well, this will be pretty. Oh, okay. Coach Lunster couldn't be here tonight. He is uh, out. He had some surgery. And I asked Megan to read the names, but it looks like she's going to have an easy night. So I'd like to pre present to Julia King. This is, I got hers. Congratulations. And Megan Duffy. Congratulations, girls. Last but not least, boys soccer, Coach McCaffrey. Uh, good evening. Our overall GPA was a 93. Uh, Nick Bitts. Austin Mizell. Captain Evan Gackler. Evan made all CNY as well. Josh DeFabio. Captain Matt Pike. Also, all CNY. Captain, Matt Siegel. Brad Davies. Nolan Burns. Jason Hange. Matt Petarelli. Zach Spinard, Peter Savillo, Brady Engel, Anthony Pauley, Cameron Hauser, John Carrillo, Boys Varsity Soccer. Thank you. As we um, usually do when we start the uh, regular part of the meeting, 
I would like to welcome the participation in government students to the front half of the auditorium so you can participate in the meeting with us. We continue on with our meeting. Um, KWS, uh, Bear Road Elementary School, will be um, doing their building planning team presentation. Um, Mr. Matala. And I see that you have um, other members besides Mrs. Ranella with you today. Just more. We're used to seeing John. Yeah, I know. That's. What crazy person has a baby, right? <laughs> I'm trying to think. I, think I, don't, I don't have any with December birthdays, so I'm good. time tonight to talk about Bear Road and some of the great things that are going on as we work to support student learning and the achievement of all students in our school. So we'll start off with a little bit of demographic information, showing you some of the background of our school. Uh, we're up a little higher than that now. We're pushing um, 660 students at Bear Road. And out of that, we have 20% of our students with an IEP and 38% of our students receiving free or reduced lunch. And uh, the district goals, one of the things that we try to use to frame our efforts at Bear Road, uh, some things that you're obviously familiar with, so I won't belabor them for you, save a few minutes of your time tonight. But again, these are what we use to, to plan our daily instruction and also our, our efforts to meet the needs of all students. And as a set of series of building goals, uh, we are striving each year to improve the achievement of all students. So the district has set forth incremental growth for all student achievement. So we use that information of, with a 3% target increase to set all of our goals for students in both ELA and math. And then we also have our character education program, which we use uh, what we call our kind kiddo uh, initiative and focus to support students in their character and moral development. One of the things that we are really excited about this year uh, is the formation of collaboration that we use to improve student learning. So essentially, each grade level this year has established and formed together as a professional learning community. And as members of active PLCs, or professional learning communities, staff members work together to support the learning needs of all students. Essentially, we've built time into our schedule for grade levels to meet together. And during those meetings, teachers spend time talking about student achievement data, we identify areas for growth of all of our students. We provide some targeted systemic instruction to support those areas of identified growth. One of the key things that we are focusing on is student learning. We're kind of shifting away from the I taught it model to did the students actually learn it. And one of the exciting outcomes of professional learning communities is that teachers themselves become an active part of the learning process. They actually grow as they share um, teaching strategies and learning strategies for students. One of the things that we utilize to examine and evaluate student achievement and data is something called the Ames Web Testing Piece. And the next series of slides highlights the student testing or student learning data as uh, measured by the Ames Web Testing. And three times a year we benchmark all of our students and we do that in the fall. We're gearing up to do that when we come back from the holiday break, and then we'll do it again in the springtime. And again, this is one of the pieces, one of the tools that we have available to us to 
help identify student areas for growth. An ideal distribution throughout these slides would be an 80% of our students should fall into tier one, 15% at tier two, and then 5% of our students at tier three. That's a typical um, standard distribution. Um, Ames Web is one of the more widely recognized and nationally normed tests. And as grade levels during our PLC meetings, we sit down and we analyze this information as one of the pieces or one of the tools to, again, focus our instruction to help support student learning. So anywhere we see something that's wildly discrepant from that 80, 15, and 5 percent, that's one of the things that we really spend a lot of time talking about at each grade level. So I'm not going to necessarily belabor the issues with you, but yeah, some of those, but you can see some of them, like for example, fourth grade for math, that's something that's truly out of character, so it's one of the things that we're going to, and have been spending time talking about and working towards improving student learning and student targets. One of the other pieces that we have, other data tools that we have, is our state assessment data that students take each spring. And the first slide talks about our state ELA assessment information. And starting off with third grade, uh, we're kind of holding steady. Ideally, again, we'd be seeing some 3% incremental growth for each of our students, uh, but that's still an area that is a work in progress for us. So one of the things that we're really excited about, and I'll get into a little bit in more detail, is through the work of our professional learning communities, we've established something called an RTI block or a win time. And I'll get into that in a little bit more detail coming up. So that's helping to support our students in both third and fourth grade. Our state math assessment data is, is our next slide. And um, we took a little bit of a dip at third grade last year, but uh, our fourth grade students are still kind of trending up in a, in, the, in, the, in a good direction. And again, we use our incremental growth measure to add and build our targets for these, both for these state assessment um, measures coming up this spring. Another tool that we utilize in our district is the Fontes and Pinnell benchmarking assessment. And uh, this slide shows the progress uh, for each of the three years that our district has utilized the F and P assessment tool. And we went from 68% in 2013, and our students in the last school year, 77% of our students made at least a year's worth of growth through their efforts in the classroom. And again, these are the, the, the value of the Fontes and Pinnell system is that it, allow, it gives teachers a very insightful look into the overall reading ability of students. It measures not just their fluency, but also their comprehension of text. So it gives teachers a very insightful piece of information that, again, they can use when it comes time to analyzing data and identifying areas for student growth. All right, so now our targets for this upcoming, this current school year. 80% of our students will make at least one year's worth of growth using the FNP, the Fontes and Pinnell Benchmarking Assessment. And one of the things that we'd like to really highlight and recognize is that 80% is, is a great target to make a full year's worth of growth, but we know that for some of our students, especially those who are below grade level, a year's worth of growth just simply isn't enough. Because if they make a year's worth of growth, they're gonna, that deficit in their learning is still going to exist. So for those students, we're going to really try to target and systemically attack their learning deficits to help not just make a year's worth of growth, but make a year plus worth of growth so we can narrow any learning deficits and gaps that they have. As far as the state assessment pieces go, 17% of our third grade students will score at a level three or four, again, showing some incremental growth. And also following last year's uh, performance, our fourth, current fourth grade students will also score at 17%. <laughs> to help us do that, to help us achieve those goals, I mentioned earlier one of the things that we're really excited about is our response to intervention uh, initiative at Bear Road. And we call that WIN time, which stands for what I need. So speaking from a student's perspective, that 30 minutes of targeted instruction provides students with exactly what it is that they need to be successful and narrow any learning gaps or the nice piece about this RTI or WIN model is that it meets the needs of all students. So not just those who are at or below grade level, but WIN time will also allow us to really reach and hopefully meet the learning needs of those students who are above grade level. And a lot of times in a, in a typical setting, those are some of the students that are most difficult to reach and help them to um, 
it's experienced greater levels of academic success. So we're really excited about the opportunities that wind time provides us. Some other strategies that we utilize at Bear Road, uh, some of the big things are we're seeing growth with the use of Daily Five and Cafe throughout more and more of our classrooms. That's a, a pretty well-researched, nationally known program to help support literacy instruction. Um, we're beginning to have our students do more self-assessment and self-analysis of their learning and of their work using both the two and four point rubrics that are common on, commonly found on, on these state assessments. So that we have some great strategies. Again, the biggest thing is, is that intervention time that we have happening at all of our grade levels at Bear Road. Our next slide talks about the math goals for our students. <clears throat> for math, all of our students, we want them to meet the targeted growth measures as shown by the Ames Web testing data. Again, making at least a year's worth of growth, if not more, especially for those students who are below grade level. Uh, on the state assessment piece, 32% is our targeted number for students on the third grade math assessment to score or an achieve a level three or four. For fourth grade students, that number is at 29%, and that 29% represents the incremental 3% growth measure from the students based on where they, what they achieved as third grade students. So we're following that cohort from grade level to grade level. And some of the different math strategies that we utilize and employ in our classrooms uh, one of the things is really trying to build fact fluency in our students so that they can become proficient in solving math problems accurately. Another piece we're really trying to work on and build is our math vocabulary. One of the things we've noticed, and all of our teachers and Joanne, I'm sure, will tell you that math is just as much a reading test as it is, is a mathematics test. And we're trying to help our students to really recognize and understand key terminology that is found in math problems so that they can really identify what it is that is actually being asked of them. And focusing on, again, on, on problem solving strategies. It's, you know, unfortunately, the way test questions are written is they're written with a lot of distractor type information. So we want students to be able to, able to really discern what is being asked of them so they can have, the, have a good chance at, at achieving success. And let's see here, academic character is our next piece, really to focus on, we have targeted direct instruction and a lot of teacher modeling through our Kind Kiddo program. And that's really um, our attempt to try to catch kids being good. So each month we focus on different traits and those traits are taught through a variety of different ways. Again, through, uh, we use a lot of video pieces through our morning announcement program. We do some direct teaching and modeling by our teachers each and every day. And we provide some take-home family activities so that parents can help us build and support the character education growth of our students. And anytime we see students doing great things, which happen each and every day at our school, students are recognized by that by receiving a kind kiddo coupon. And each month or every six weeks or so, we have drawings of all the students who are recognized as being kind kids. And let's see what else here, the monthly videos, which I kind of already talked with you a little bit about. So that's some of the things that are happening here at Bear Road throughout the course of this school year. You see the members of our building planning team. Joining me is Joanne up here. Where else we have Linda is over there, Nancy, Nancy Annie, Annie, and Pam joining us as well here in person tonight to help support and the efforts and Dawn, and Dawn our, our liaison as well to help us again support the efforts to try to help support students and, and meet the needs of all of our little guys over at Bear Road. And have any questions for us that Joanne can answer? And yes, sir. Just to, I think it's great you're doing the self-assessment with the, the rubric. Is that something new? Or it's newer, yes, yeah. sir. Yes. It's it's really so that the children, um, the state tests have always have two and four-point yeah. rubrics, and the children really don't understand. Like we go ahead and we say to them, check it over. What we're now asking them to do is assess it, not check it, assess it, it on a two-point rubric or four-point to see where, how their answers, their responses are So they know what, so they know what. Give me, they're able to see now the, the indicator for the level of achievement to reach that. We can tell them pretty much like where they're supposed to be, at least based on past tests. I think that's great. It's, it's, it's great definitely a great effort and attempt in the right direction to help the students become more reflective in their learning and that we all know is, is one of the keys to success for mm -hmm. children and, and adult learners alike. Thank you. <clears throat> 
right. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Okay, um, Alan Rowe will be here. Um, Mr. London. Good evening, and I'm sure you're ready for another riveting uh, presentation. I thought coming in that, you know, we, we're going to follow the musical performance, outstanding, and then we're going to follow the student scholar athletes, and uh, we're going we're gonna to come behind them. Great. But um, as I watched that presentation, I'll tell you, what was great for me was to see, I was doing tally marks, to see over 40 Allen Road students have their names called as those athletes, or to see Mr. Sorensen you know, in the in the jazz choir, or Mr. Berkman playing in that, or just all those kids that um, now having been in Allen Road 13 years, it's a it's a joy. It was actually great to follow them, so I could see them and their accomplishments. And um, some of our newer teachers, said, you know, Kelly said to me, "I just can't wait till I get to the point where I'm seeing some of my former students recognized like this." So that was great to see that tonight. I'm sorry we probably won't be quite as engaging, um, but we'll share with you everything that's going on at Allen Road. First, starting off with our demographics. I think what strikes me about this slide is uh, about 10 years ago, as we get these presentations, um, although we were still in the same ballpark enrollment-wise, uh, we well, the first year we had the ENL program, come over from Smith Road, was at 13 students. One of those who was one of the scholar athletes recognized tonight from our first group of, of those students. So it was great to see that. Um, but now it's gone from 13 to 50. We just had our 50th student this week. When I first started there, we were approximately 12 to 13 percent free and reduced lunch. Now we've more than doubled that. So definitely some demographic changes, even though the size of the building hasn't changed a great deal. And so it's presented us with some challenges, and I think one of our biggest challenges to adapt to that, to not have uh, the students and the community have to fit into our way of doing things, but for us to adapt and modify and fit into what their needs are. So hopefully that's where we're moving, and we'll share with you that information tonight. You're familiar, obviously, with all the, um, when we look at the district goals first, what you see there in uh, reddish color is the indicators that we said when we started this three-year plan for our goals. That's what we're going to focus on. What's developed is the green ones that are highlighted to show you where our work is going to evolve into and setting the stage for where we are intending to go for the next three years. So you'll also hear from us work around RTI and PLC this year. And really, that nicely with differentiation, form of assessment and feedback, and exploring innovative strategies for using time. So we're in this transition place as we close out the, the third year of this plan and start to move in and, and the plan evolves. Um, our state testing data, the way our formula, as you can see, is to give you what our actual was in 14. The goal in 15 was 3% higher, as Mr. Mitala recognized. And, before we go into all the, the statistics here, I just want to share with you, I guess, one of my, one of my perspectives on this is you can make numbers mean a lot of different things. Uh, we've chosen to go with 3% increases as well. We've done it for FMP and for state test data and for Ames web data. Personally, I'll let you know I kind of struggle with that. I don't know if the 3% increase is the most accurate way, the best way to do it, depending on what you're looking at for state test scores. That works really well. You know, for Ames web, I don't know if 3% is what you're shooting for. We're kind of reevaluating using that as the assessment or using that as the target for all these different assessments um, because you have different purposes for each one. But for the purpose of this, that's where we set that to kind of say our goal overall is to make sure that in all three areas of the data, we're moving forward and we're seeing growth. So for the state test data, you can see that uh, we're not seeing huge jumps, but we're seeing steady growth. And I think that's what stands out to me the most about this, that we've gone from You know, in third grade math, 51%, so having our goal of 54, exceeding that with a 60% actual, so that our goal now is 63. 
third grade ELA. Didn't quite hit the goal. And even though we dropped down a little bit, we still set the same goal as last year because we don't want to actually lower that goal. We want to still hit that 42%. Fourth grade math, the actual being 33, so setting the 36% as a goal, exceeding that by hitting 41%. Fourth grade ELA, which has been an area of concern for us for a few years, still seeing, although it's lower than where we'd like it to be, steady incremental growth in that. Going from the 21% actual, setting a goal of 24%, going 1% above that with 25, so 28% is our target for this year, fourth grade ELA. Our Ames Web data. Again, the format I wanted to share with you is what was our goal last spring, what was our actual and then what's our fall actual, so the baseline at the start of this year, and setting the 3% increase from there. So this tells you what we were shooting for at the end of last year, whether we hit it or not, what the baseline data gave us, and then what we're shooting for for by the end of this year. Kindergarten, improvement in uh, letter sound fluency, but a little bit of a struggle in math. We're taking a look at that. You know, the, the, the test is about counting very quickly to 100 within a minute. Um, we're not sure about, you know, what that actually indicates, and that's always been a point of discussion. So, um, but we're looking at that piece. As Matt said, there's certain areas in this data that you kind of target and you say, why is that looking the way it is? For first grade, the nonsense word fluency data shows the growth. In math, though, we have a dip, so we want to take a look at that and see why at first grade with math. Interesting, in our four sections of math last year, we had some diversity of um, who focused on the modules, who went with, you know, the, the pilot materials, and so some diversity in the instruction there. Something interesting for us to look at. In second grade, again, in both areas, Matt and exceeded the target. Third grade, I think the interesting point with this data is the Ames web data is actually consistent with state test data that we saw, you know, an increase or meeting or exceeding the, the math goal, um, but it could be ELA. That's exactly what we saw with their state test scores as well. So interesting pattern there to take a closer look at for us. And our fourth grade games web data. With our FMP, I just want to make sure I clarify so you understand our target for this year based on the previous grade's end of year percentage. So the second grade target for this year is 3% above where first grade ended last year because that's the students they received. And again, you can do that a number of different ways, but for us, what made most sense after having the discussion was to set a target that's based on the, the, the current students that grade level is working. Another new addition this year is that uh, we have the word of the week, we're calling it the WOW. We're going to have a, a word of tier two vocabulary in the announcements. And each grade level um, will take a word and work with that word so it becomes the language of the building. Another new addition is the exploration of the PLC and the star time. When it comes to the PLC, of course, it's focused on uh, student, um, student growth, student learning, but it's really been a team building experience working on a PLC team. We meet weekly. 
Um, each grade level team has established norms for our meetings. Uh, we produce minutes with an action plan um, for each week so that we know exactly where we need to go. We always take a look at the, the data and analyze it and use it um, to best target each student's needs. We're also, it should be known, uh, grade levels are working on the book, learning by doing, during our, our PLC, PLC time as well. Okay, we are continuing a lot of great work at Allen Road in our math area. Um, we have continued to work with our missing variable um, assessments and uh, work with that because we believe as a building that that was something that was very, very important and um, we are continuing that work and we should have data on that at the end of this year. Um, I'd like to take a minute to talk to you really about the star time that we're having at Allen Road. Um, I am a, um, I'm in my first year at Allen Road, and I am so excited to be on one of the teams that is using STAR. Let me tell you what STAR means. STAR is Supplemental Tiered Activities Resources, okay, RTI, um, just termed a different way, but still a great, great um, tool for both the students and for the teachers. Um, the fourth grade team has worked tirelessly to bring what each student needs to those students. It has been a wonderful thing, I have to tell you, both seeing my team come together and just, we all want the same thing for our students. We are constantly talking about what the next student needs and, oh, we're going to move this student out of this group because they really could benefit from something else. I feel that they're here is, is where it should be on grade level. Um, we have dove right in the beginning of the year, and that's the RTI. We all went back to our rooms and we discussed it. We had the psychologist did a um, speech uh, talking about the three different peers. That was wonderful. That brought us all together. And then Amy Hexit came in and she talked to us about differentiation, which again was just it was such a great for us to learn and to expand what, what we wanted to do and what we were already doing. Um, there are three great levels using the star at Allen Road, and um, we are all meeting needs, maybe a little different based on the grade levels, kindergarten and fourth grade, different things. Um, but we are all working with our teams to do what our students need. And um, it's been a truly eye-opening, wonderful experience, both with my fellow teachers and seeing the students already show growth. It's very, very exciting. I'm, I'm very excited about it. Okay, and now I'm going to talk a little bit about our culture. This is my first year at Allen Road. Um, I just have to say that I feel so welcomed to be there. It has been a, literally a dream come true for me. Um, we have some work that we're continuing, but we also have some new things that we're going to be implementing either kind of back into Allen Road or, or brand new. Um, we are going to be bringing back, um, actually I shouldn't say that, I'm sorry. We are going to be continuing with the bucket filling program, which is something we've been doing. But in addition to that, we're also going to commit to having quarterly um, assemblies with the teachers and students and at that point we can highlight students we can talk about what's going on in the building to really build that that building community um, so we're very excited about that also we had a caring club that was started and it was intended to only last for one semester well the students all came together and they decided they asked permission if they could continue this caring club for the entire year and of course, our response was yes. And so now we have a caring club that is going to be all year long. And I think that is so exciting and so indicative of our, of our students at Allen Road that they have 